Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today we are going to be going over the atom. Last week, we went over the infinity symbol. Of course, we're breaking this all down from the Hathor material. So if this is your first time on the channel, first of all, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. But you might want to go back and start from the beginning because these are specific exercises created by Tom Kenyon and the Hathors to help us unlock anxieties, all sorts of obstacle stimulation from the brain. If you're following along in your own copy of the book, we are going to be starting on page 157, which is section 2.8, the atom. The atom pattern is more complex than the infinity pattern. As a result of this complexity, it will challenge your brain's spatial abilities further. There are nine phases to this geometry. Each one of them involves moving an imaginary point of white light around a circle, the center of which is the center of your head. While it may seem overwhelming at first glance, once you work with it a few times, the geometry will feel intuitively correct and increasingly easy to do so. Phase one, imagine a perfect circle around your head parallel to the floor. You can make this circle as large or as small as you wish so long as it completely encompasses your entire head. The center of this circle, as I said earlier, aligns with the center of your head. I personally prefer the diameter of the circle to be around 18 inches, but I have known some people who place the diameter at a mere 12 inches in diameter or as large as several feet. I know of one instance where an individual extended the circle to include the entire galaxy. This was indeed a creative and an unusual use of the guidelines. However large or small you make your imaginary circle, make sure that the center point of the circle is the center of your head. Place an imaginary point of white light on the far right side of the circle, for example, off to your right, and begin to slowly move the point of light in a clockwise motion around your head parallel to the floor. In this orientation, 12 o'clock is directly in front of you. Since you are placing the point of light to your right side, it is at 3 o'clock position. This means that you will be moving the point of light behind you and towards the left side to begin with. So coming around the left, starting at the right. Then slowly bring the point of light around the left position of the circle and to the front of you. Finally, bring the point of light to its original starting position off to your right. See diagram 2. So here is diagram two, as I said. So I think that makes sense. 12 o'clock is in front, starts here at three o'clock, and then it moves around back to the original position. Make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase one. Phase two, now tilt the imaginary circle up 45 degrees towards an imaginary perpendicular line that runs down through the top of your head and to the floor. See diagram 2A. Place an imaginary point of light at the upper right edge of the circle and begin to move that point of light in a clockwise direction meaning that you will move the point behind you towards your left side. Slowly bring the point of light around the left portion of the circle into the front of you. Finally, bring the point of light back to its original starting point off to your right. Make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase two. So this definitely, in my opinion, has total EMDR vibes. I know we've talking about we've spoken about EMDR multiple times on this channel. I am a huge fan of EMDR. I did EMDR. Um, I know a lot of you watching have done EMDR. And just as I'm envisioning how to do this and how to like see the light, being able to use the eyes, even though the eyes can't get to the back of the head, the eyes are making a com conscious effort to kind of see where that light is going which is a lot like the patterning of EMDR where they do the rapid eye movement where they 
you know, go back and forth, up and down, and they actually bring you to a place of trauma where you're remembering a certain emotion or an event while they're doing the rapid eye movement uh, therapy because of the way the neuropaths, the eyes connect to the brain. And basically, the whole point of EMDR, which made a lot of sense for me, is people who have PTSD, or in my case, CPTSD, which PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder, which usually comes from like one big event that happens. That's why a lot of people in military have PTSD. They'll, you know, something will happen in war that will make them move into a state where their nervous system is not uh, uh, firing off properly. CPTSD is complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And this comes a lot with people who grew up um, abused as children, which was me. Um, and especially when it comes down to like emotional and verbal abuse, which I took a lot of as a child, not just in my home life, but at my school. And my school has gotten in a lot of trouble. Uh, the school I went to, even though I'm a lot older now, but it's, it's now there's a lot of lawsuits that are being filed against it. So that is very validating for me that I wasn't the only one being heavily abused by the school um, as a child. But anyway, so complex, it's layers and layers and layers and layers of abuse. And what tends to happen? So there's a common phase where someone will say sleep on it, like just go sleep on it. Well, that's not coming from nothing. So when we get into REM sleep, which is the deepest, um, deepest level of sleep, the eyes rapidly flick under the eyelid. And what's happening is that they are connecting to the nerves in the brain to like rewire the nervous system from the stresses of the day. Now, what happens to someone who has gone through intense abuse, intense anxiety, and their nervous system isn't firing off properly is that they cannot get into REM sleep. And so because their body's in shock, because their mind is in shock and they live in a state of being shocked, I think somebody is at my front door, if you hear my dog barking, I call him the sheriff. He's the neighborhood sheriff. Um, uh, you, your, your, your brain can't function. It can't, it can't calm down the nerves. And so you go into complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Your nervous system is not firing off properly. And so what EMDR therapy does is it mimics what the eyes do. It's being, it's inducing the eyes to move as they would in REM sleep and REM, uh, EMDR therapy worked wonders on me. I had no idea how messed up my nervous system was until I did EMDR therapy. And I remember driving back home after my first session of EMDR therapy and just feeling so calm and just being like, oh, is this how, is this how people are supposed to feel? Because I've never felt this calm before. And so I would highly suggest it. But the way he's talking about moving the eyes, moving the thought around these patterns, and this sounds a lot like EMDR therapy. All right, so this brings us to phase three. In this phase, you imagine the circle around your head at a perpendicular angle to the floor. This means that in reference to the previous circles, you will, be moved, you will have moved it towards your left side another 45 degrees. See diagram uh, B, uh, 2B. Place an imaginary point of light directly above your head. Move the point down around the back of your head, then move it around the front of your head and back to where it started from above your head. Make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace that circle around your head this way in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase three. Phase four. Phase four, sorry. In this phase, you tilt the imaginary circle towards your left side at a 45 degree angle. See diagram 2C. Imagine the point of light at the left edge of the circle. Move the point along the circle down towards your right side around the back of your head, then around the front of your head back to where you started. You may have noticed that you are now moving the point of light in a counterclockwise direction. I think our friends over in England call it anticlockwise. Over in the United States, we call it counterclockwise. In this phase, the point of light is off to your far left side. Since you will be moving the point of light behind your head and over to your right, you are moving it in a counterclockwise direction. As you've done this very, have you as you as you have done with every phase of this pattern, make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase four. Phase five. 
In this phase, you will tilt the imaginary circle another 45 degrees towards your left. This means that the circle is now parallel to the floor. Place the imaginary point of light at the far left edge of the circle. Move the point counterclockwise around the circle, which means that the point of light will move from its current location on the circle around the back of your head towards your right side. It will then move around the front of your head. Finally, it will return to its starting position at the far left edge of the circle. As you have done with every phase of this pattern, make sure you, you're moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase five. And I will put a link to this book down in the description box below because I do think that this is super important that if you really want to start working with these um, healing modalities that Tom Kenyon and the Hathors are offering, that you have a copy of this book for yourself. Phase six. In this phase, you will tilt the left edge of the imaginary circle towards the floor at 45 degree angle. Place the imaginary point at the far left of the circle and is tilted down. Move it along the edge of the circle behind your head and up towards your right side. Then move it around the right side of the circle, finally returning to its starting position down at the left edge of the circle. As you have done with every phase of this pattern, make sure you are slowly moving the point of light and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase six, phase seven. Now tilt the left edge of the imaginary circle another 45 degrees down towards the floor. This means that the circle is now running up per perpendicular to the floor. Place an imaginary point of light on the downward edge of the circle. Move the point along the edge of the circle behind your head and then move the point of light over your head then around the front of your head and back to where it started. So you're basically just moving the disc around your head. Make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and then always, always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase seven. Phase eight, tilt the bottom edge of the imaginary circle that has been running perpendicular to the floor at 45 degrees to your right. Place an imaginary point of light on the right edge of the circle. Move the point along the edge of the circle so that it passes behind your head. The point of light moves around your left side, then in front of your head, and finally back to where it started. And yes, you have shifted back to a clockwise direction, the very same direction you started out with. Make sure you are moving the point of light very slowly and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase eight. Phase nine. This is the final phase of the Adern pattern. Tilt the imaginary circle so that it is now parallel to the floor back to where you started. Place an imaginary point of white light on the far right side of the circle and begin to slowly move the point of light in a clockwise motion around your head. This means that you will be moving the point of light behind you and towards your left side to begin with. Then slowly bring the point of light around the left portion of the circle and to the front of you. Finally, bring the point of light to its original starting point off to your right. Make sure you are slowly moving the point of light and that it always moves around the circle at the exact same distance from the center of your head. Continue to trace the circle around your head in this way and in this direction for about 30 seconds. This completes phase nine and one complete cycle of the atom pattern. It is very important that you rest for a little while after completing this geometry. Lie down if you can, or at least close your eyes and sense what is happening for you. Become aware of the physical sensation in the region of your head, both in your head and the space around your head. Become aware of your mental and emotional experiences. Notice what you are thinking and feeling emotionally. And finally, notice the quality of your awareness. So next week, we will pick back up with the golden octahedron. If anybody is doing these exercises, I would like to hear how you are finding them down in the comment section below. Please, please, please let me know what's happening for you while participating in this. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon.
Let me show.